Is it a bit hot now? This one's for you, Ben, if you're editing. <laughs> it's you right here. Taking the piss. Thank you. Um, mm, or I could do the like. I think something's filtering it now. You know, you're being filtered. You're, am I being? Oh, get any Discord's that. doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, because it's through Discord. So the mm. if you listen to the recording, you'll hear my horrible mouth smacking sounds. <laughs> oh, <laughs> love. I thought you were doing like a theremin kind of. Thing. I was doing it. Oh, no, I was doing. And I was blowing on the mic, which probably just immediately got cut out by the, <laughs> the filter. So it just was going. <laughs> oh, and if you're listening to us on the audio <laughs> listener, you'll have absolutely you, you won't have seen the mouth movements. You'll just get that lovely noise instead. Mm. Um, what a lovely way to kick off our episode. Welcome to Tanked Up. It's episode 384. I'm one of your hosts, Ben, here with Adol. Hey! And Lucy. Hi! <laughs> As you can tell, we've started off really, really hot. Really, really well. So let's open some beers. Um, Lucy, you're going to stay hot because you're not having yeah. a beer this evening. You're drinking a hot drink. Yeah, I'm having coffee because I was asleep not long ago. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I, I was also asleep not long ago, but I'm going to yeah. have a beer. Um, well, I don't blame you. What beer are you going to have, Adam? Ooh, this is a special one that I, I teased last week, I think. It's another Tartarus. Ah, uh, yes. If we recall way back in the early 2010s, um, there was this... Uh, this like arms race of the the most IPA IPA ish um, possible and like how much the ABB IPA can race. we shove into a beer? Hmm? The IPA ness race. Mm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so Tartarus and so one of the one of those famous beers was the 120 minute IPA. Do you remember those? They were put out by Dogfish. No. Dogfish uh, head. I don't remember the beer specifically. I don't think I ever had that. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, uh, but it was like their big, um, this is the hoppiest beer, and it's 15% Tartarus has met, made the lad on. Mm. I like the 120 minute IPA, 15.3%. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> no, no, I think it was a brew dog beer that I had that was like. One of these, like yeah, like ridiculous eighteen percent strength or something like that. But that was probably, I think that was a stout. Oh, though. what was the Brewdog did that uh, back in the early days? Whenever they released kind of limited batch beers, uh, essentially they had like a random name generator, and it was just like three words that used to come out. Uh... So every beer was three words that were just randomly generated. And there is something. Uh, I can never remember what it is now, but something uh, squid assassin or or ninja ninja squid or assassin squid or something like that, and that is like a, uh, a, a yeah, that's like a fifty percent fucking stout uh, or something Ubisoft, like that. Yeah. I think yeah. <laughs> oh my, the red rye IPA, the albino squid assassin. Yes, that's it. That's it. <laughs> the bloodless assassin lies in wait, motionless in the deepest ink black depths, a lone sentinel and gatekeeper to an oak aged booty. Waiting silently for the perfect moment to unleash his arsenal. Prepare to be boarded. Full tilt rye whiskey character runs a shot across your bow. Blah, blah, blah. 7.4%. Mm. Oh. Oh, I thought it was more than that. Um, Maybe there's like an This one has version. no flavor text. It just says alcohol 15.3% uh, volume. 5.05 <laughs> UK units in one small bottle. Wow. <laughs> uh, and Does it it's say on there, please drink with a friend, just in case? Uh... It doesn't. Don't drink whilst pregnant. But also, at all. Don't, even get look at, mile of it. don't even sniff it look whilst at that. pregnant. Look at that. Devilly <laughs> label. It's good. It's like a Balrog. Yeah. yeah. That's very cool. I don't know. What cool. is a lad on? Laden? I don't know. Is that a thing? Laden sure. Dragon. Tartarus. Ah, oh, it's a dragon. Okay. I didn't know Laden was a type of dragon. N nor I. No. 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 We're obviously not versed. Is that like the Gaelic or something? Oh, I see. It's, the, it's a. Um, Hundred headed serpent dragon from uh, Greek mythology. Oh, oh not the Hydra. Hundred heads. That would be ridiculous, well, according to, wouldn't it? No, may, may, according to this blurb on YouTube, but uh, 
No, it doesn't have to be hundred headed. It doesn't look like it's just a serpent like dragon that was a twist around a tree in the garden of Hesperides uh, and guarded the golden apples. Hmm. Um, Hercules, Hercules killed Laden with the bow. Oh, it's the dragon Hercules kills to get the golden apples. Uh, oh. okay. uh. Uh. Right, Fair. but it's not the Hydra. No, that's obviously so. The problem with Google results giving the description of a YouTube video, which that person probably just made that up. Or got confused. <laughs> what if you cut off the head of, like, you know, one of the hydras, and then... You get two. Until, yeah, until it reaches 100. Uh, feasible. And it would just yeah. topple over because it's so top-heavy. But if you do the maths... I was thinking, does that work out? And I don't care you to know. You I'm can, because like, it's not I'm, right? It's just a linear, it's, it's just a linear cut one head, get two back. Yeah. So you just always add one. Yeah. So it's if probably it some three, like Fibonacci heads. sequence or something right. like that. I don't yeah. know. So if you, you start with eight heads, you cut them all off, you've suddenly got 16, you've then got 32, you've then got 64, and, you, you, and suddenly you're like, right, I'm at 64. Now I need to be slightly more careful with my head. Yeah, now I need to only something. cut 13 heads exactly. to add 13 yeah. to 64. Yes, yes. And but you two. start with... Mm. You don't have to cut all the heads oh, yeah, off, right? You no, can cut, no. It's actually very simple because every head, you could just if you cut it one head at a time, and it had two heads. Then you just do 98, 98 strokes, and you get to a hundred. There is a YouTube video dedicated to this math solution. It's probably on like number file, uh, YouTube <laughs> channel or something. Oh, like like, like so. how to, how to how to optimize the number of. Or just what the maths is. Just yeah, just yeah. what the, the algebraic equation is. How to get 100 Hydra heads without breaking a sweat. Um, <laughs> what thrilling beer and video game what? content. Um, I'm yeah, going to what, open what? I'm going to open a beer. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I've been to a shop which sells beer uh, that is slightly further than around the corner. So I have a, uh, a bit of a special beer. Um, it's a, a kind of limited release from Left Handed Giant. Um, they make um, oh bollocks! What's the beer called? Cheeseburger Cavalry, I think, almost uh, every year, which is an, an IPA. <laughs> Was that put in an AI generator? Uh, probably, <laughs> probably. This year they've made three. So it's almost like the Cannonball Run, uh, a lighter mm -hmm. version, Cheeseburger Cavalry, and then what I have this evening, which is Double Cheese. It's a hazy mm. double IPA at eight point four percent. Um, it's got an excellent mounted mm. cheeseburger night on the uh, that on the can. It is um, a nice can. It is. It does uh, have a little bit of flavour to it. Uh, brewed mm. as a hazy dipper counterpart to our long running classic cheeseburger cavalry, alongside slider, which is the lighter one, and double cheese to highlight the breadth of mosaic and citra. Heaps of oats, cascading layers of whole leaf hops, two helpings of incognito, and more pellet hops than its two siblings combined. This is double in every way possible. Cool. So, what a stupid thing! <laughs> Cheeseburger night. I love it. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful know, can. It yes. just makes no sense. Oh, it's <laughs> yeah. exploded everywhere. Um, oh, I'll pour. Cheese Adel. got to you. <laughs> it will come back to you. For, <laughs> I, uh, I do want to. I, I found the the bottle didn't have flavor text, text, but the website does. So right. I figured it's their third birthday beer. Okay. For such a beast, we have brewed a monstrous IPA, sweet, bitter, strong, and packed with 30 grams per liter of hops split between the boil and dry hop. During a two-hour boil, we added 1.5 kilograms of hops, a mix of Warrior, Simcoe, and Amarillo, every five minutes. A total of 37.5 kilograms was added to the kettle, totaling nearly 200 IBUs. We then dry hopped it with another 37.5 kilograms of Warrior, Simcoe, and Amarillo for a total hop rate of 75 kilograms. Barley wine or IPA, who knows? All we know is that it's a monster <laughs> beer. <laughs> and I mean, it does look like a barley wine. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's gosh, got yeah. A little bit of a, yeah. It had a bit of a creamy head that's mostly dissipated. It's got that reddy orange character mm. that you get with barley wines. It smells divine. A little sweet, citrus, slightly floral. Getting and we're like thinking like somewhere like, like a. Or dark berry hmm? notes. Are you, are you getting any chocolate or dark? berry notes that a little bit wines. of berry but not a lot of chocolate mm. on the nose okay. um it is the season for a barley wine oh yeah i've had barley wine yeah, for ages yeah, we autumn. say this almost this time every uh, year like oh yeah. <laughs> wow you can tell it's strong <laughs> it is 
<laughs> it is pure ethanol. Syrupy. It is both like <laughs> viscous and sweet. Um, like that finish is still quite sweet. Mm. It has a lovely caramelly biscuity malt though. I dare you to knock it back in. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> Dude, I barely had dinner. I had a I had a bag of crisps. <laughs> before I passed out for an hour. <laughs> well, you see, this is I'm on the opposite side of that coin where I gorge mm. myself on food and now I'm struggling. I mean, <laughs> like even drinking my coffee is making my stomach want to explode. <laughs> so, mm. yeah. I will say, it doesn't taste anything. like 15%. It just tastes strong. Mm. Yeah. 15% in a beer is quite a lot. <clears throat> um... So like it is a it is boisterous I guess it's it's got it's got heft it um I really like the finish though that like sickly sweet alcohol lingering with a bit of that caramel maltiness and just a bit of like piney spice as well hmm mostly on the like a I guess it's like yeah. It's like um, it's got this piney resinous uh, undertone that sort of comes out as the sweetness fades in the finish, but is also there in the main taste. It definitely tastes like Halloween and like the, uh, like autumnal, I guess, okay. because I think the fruits, which are like a little apple-y and like some citrus, but that apple-y character, it's like covered in toffee because of just the the sweetness going on in this beer so you're getting right. like a candied apple type vibe um that's nice it's mm. a nice flavor mm. combination. Yeah, yeah oh yeah it's really good and like i said it's got that resinous pininess sitting in the back mm. so like if you were in say the forests of canada at like uh some sort of outdoor halloween event having a candied apple and a really, really strong beer. Um, this is what it is. Um, it, so I don't think I could eat. I mean, I could throw it back, but it is like heavy. It is that, yeah, just even the viscosity, eat. especially with that like strong, like they're not trying to hide the sweetness the alcohol is giving. Mm. They're leaning into it. So it's just, I could slam it back, but I wouldn't feel good and not just no. because of 15%. But I just mean, it's just such a big I beer. Savor it. Yeah. That, yeah um, but it, it definitely, all of those hops are definitely making it not just like barley wine-esque, right? Mm -hmm. like, it's, like I said, it's got those fruity flavors. It's got um, that, that hoppy bitterness, which is mostly overpowered by the sweetness. But mm -hmm. as the sweetness dips and flows, you get that, you're like, oh yeah, this has been there the whole time. It's got a nice even character of that resiny pininess, such that as the sweetness and as the sort of, toffee notes and caramelly notes sort of leave or fade into each other. You, you get this reminder of the, the pine. So every time the taste shifts, you still have that steady resiny note, which is just a nice through line. Nice. Um, yeah, it's really good. It's, it's not as bizarre as the last one from Tartarus. It's just really mm. solid and not a beer I would have predicted. Okay, good. That's good let's, yeah. let's see how it sits and, and whether... Uh, whether we get uh, fucking smashed yeah. with no dinner smashed <laughs> or whether it becomes a little bit too sickly you know how I have the, the, mm. all those things that might kind of happen we'll, we'll see how that that shakes out um but for me the double the double cheese um it's as you expect with the dipper for the for the color a little bit more nice. orange perhaps uh in person than it is on the camera although it is coming across quite similar uh, nice white head to it the can i could get a, a big big nose almost as soon as i crack the can and it's um it's kind of uh, uh uh what's the word i'm looking for um, whether I've just got a little bit used to it, but the, the the nose out of the glass isn't quite as strong as that like initial like hit mm -hmm. of uh, of smells when I cracked it. But it's quite light, a little bit now of grapefruit on there, something a little bit sweeter as well, some sweeter malt in there as well. It's it sort of smells like that. Ooh, ooh, hmm. Okay, there's a few things going on in that flavour. It's a little 
bit, was it last week's beer or the week before? A little bit similar <laughs> in that there's these sweeter notes in there, but they peter out quite quickly and yeah. it moves more towards an earthier, not quite bitter, but just sort of a, an earthier, almost vegetal kind of finish on it. Um, almost maybe like a little bit kind of a sweetness of some... Um, Maybe something quite subdued, like pineapple or something. But it's maybe like a maybe like mango, which then just ripens in your mouth almost, and just becomes that little bit more earthy. Um, it's got that little bit of grapefruit in there as well. There's maybe like a hint of lychee or something on there. Mm. Um, I'm not getting what I kind of expected. Um, in the, I think they said that it was uh, mosaic and citra. In here, yeah, highlighting the breadth of mosaic and citrus. Okay, so not the standard kinds of flavors that you would sort of expect. Mm. Like, I'm not getting a huge amount of citrus from this. Although there is a, maybe a touch of like lime running through mm. it as well, but only really, really light. Uh, but it's more that kind of earthy tone that sits over the whole kind of thing. So whether it's doing a little bit of sweet, it's got a little bit of citrus in, it's then moving towards a bit of a bitter finish. Not much, but very, mm. very slightly. Um, but then there's this kind of like just earthy nature to it across the entire thing of a, of a sort of a very ripe kind of mango or a, or a bit of lychee or something like that that sort of sits in as well. Um, so it's it's very easy to drink. Like it's got a little bit of body to it, but it's not it's not thick. It's not viscous. It's just kind of sat in the middle somewhere. Um, and it's I not. I do kind apologize. And it's 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 not that kind of uh, um, sort of those beers that have sort of uh, um, you know whether they've got kind of like orange oil or something in them that gives them that little right. bit of kind of slickness to the to the mouthfeel it doesn't quite have that but it's edging towards that you know it's very medium sort of bodied but it is very smooth and very sort of nice and it's got that kind of um i think as 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 that had a giant do in some of their beers mm. it's almost it's not quite there but you mm. could tell that maybe the lighter versions would have a bit of a pillowy kind of quality to them this is just a touch heavier than that but it still feels like it could at any moment, kind of just be a little lighter as well. Um, this is very nice. I really like this. Mm. Mr. Cheeseburger. Mr. Cheeseburger. Double mm. cheese. I'll have one double mm. cheese, please. Um, you can have cheeseburger. Oh, <laughs> That's like 2001 memes. God, something like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know how you pulled that one out. Well, we started we started in the early two thousands, so we might as well wrap up the beers in within the early two thousands as well. So that's good. Mm. Um, should we talk about some games then, whilst we enjoy these beers? Um, I feel like I need to touch on Dark Envoy again. Um, I know I mentioned it last week, and I said I hadn't gone back to it because. Um, the patch basically stopped my save file and I would have to start it again. Mm -hmm. And I still haven't started it because <laughs> I updated it all. I opened it. Well, I say I haven't started it. I did. I yeah. opened it. I went mm. into the very light character creation uh, that they have for the two starting characters, the, 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 the brother and sister that you start out uh, with um, in this kind of like CRPG style kind of game. And just couldn't bring myself to play it mm. i'm like uh I, I will bring up uh bring up my steam uh to see exactly how much i have played i have played four hours of this game and i don't really want to play the same four hours again mm -hmm. because yeah um, it's it's it can be such a barrier it can absolutely and it is from what i understand it's not like a crpg which is open world right it's not kind of like your borders gates where you start off you play the first kind of half an hour to an hour and then the world is open to you it might be gated in terms of like level caps and those kinds of things about moving through space and stuff but from what i understand of dark envoy 
you uh, uh, you kind of you do the first bit right you do the tutorial elements and you 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 understand how the game plays and stuff mm-hmm. and then they kind of let you loose on a, a very limited kind of world so the idea is cool the story mission is here but you've got the option of going to two other like instances and you can go to those and level up um so i did i went to one i leveled up and then i'm like cool i'll now go to the story instance which is incredibly fucking difficult uh, even though i picked one to level up at a little bit and it just is uh it doesn't it doesn't quite move quickly enough for me i mm. think like it's quite slow mm. in it's like you're in this instance and this is going to take you half an hour to get through and that's fine loads of people will really enjoy that but there's this yeah. quite intricate sort of set of rooms and spaces to move through on its kind of isometric sort of style uh, um kind of board and the characters you know you've got four classes to pick from at the start so you can kind of tailor your team of two quite quickly into you know whether they uh, there's any synergies and stuff between classes I haven't played enough to, to know whether any of that kind of comes in but I thought I'd pick you know a warrior melee kind of combat and a I think it's called an engineer but it's much r- more ranged mm-hmm. kind of combat a bit more crowd control kind of thing so you can freeze people in place your warrior can just go up and bash the shit out of them you know that mm-hmm. kind of combo of, of characters and the, the sort of the issues that I ran into were very much that my engineer is just so light that she got killed constantly and I'm having to mm. kind of kite then around with the warrior to get back to kind of revive her and, and things like this. Mm. And the game tries to play with a bit of a cover system, um, but not in the same way or anywhere near the same kind of success that something like Mutant Year Zero did very, very well. Something like, you know, it's almost kind of like they yeah. want it to be almost this hybrid XCOM kind of crpg sort of thing so you can move into the space you can get behind cover you can pick your targets out that kind of thing but the amount of stuff that doesn't provide cover which looks like it should there's <laughs> only maybe like of, of all of the stuff that's on the screen that looks like it should provide cover maybe only 20 percent of it does so it's really limited in that aspect of the, of does the it, game does it tell you that before you move your character that so it, it's it, not it, a... it does um mm-hmm. because it comes up with uh, as most games do like a little shield to show that yeah. you would be moving okay. into into cover so i'm like cool i'll hover yeah. over this bit oh there's no shield so that's that's not cover right. i'll hover over to this bit well that's not cover either so basically i can get the only bit that provides me cover is already in the enemy's line of sight so I can't mm. set my character that provides not even Overwatch. You know, it's not XCOM in that sort of way, but I can get my character who is ranged, sat in cover, send my melee class in so the characters can see him, and pull him back out so they track back, and my then ranged character can just shoot them as they're mm. following my warrior. It doesn't quite allow you to that that level of granularity and being able to play in that sort of in that sort of thing uh in that way and the storyline has opened up a little bit but it's kind of i hate to say mid-tier but the writing (laughs) wasn't you know i wasn't enamored by kind of anything that i was seeing or experiencing within those sort of first three hours like it's almost and it it tries it really tries the game really tries I think this is the thing with it. Like it wants to, <laughs> it wants to yeah. pull you in. It wants to keep you engaged. It's it's got a you know the graphics uh, and the aesthetic are great when you're in that slightly more isometric view, looking down at the uh, kind of the board of spaces and and things like that, and the, and the, the 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 kind of the dungeons that you're running through. But it then jumps into like a first person or not a first person, like a a, a, a camera down at eye level looking at the characters mm-hmm. when they're doing their kind of discussions with with other characters all these interstitials between moving around these spaces and it's maybe like skyrim levels of graphics so mm. it kind of pulls very good you. That's what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> it pulls you out very quickly of being like yeah. mm. and the one of the things which which really stuck was i picked up some gear and i'd equipped it and the gear shows up in the uh, uh, in those scenes hmm. and it just looked so the thing that my one of my characters had on their face looked so absurd 
that I'm like, oh no, I already want this game to just have a button where I can just turn off the uh, any gear that I put on. I don't want to see it. Yeah, I just want them to be their base <laughs> models. I don't care. Like, because she had this like ridiculous mask on her face, and like, why would she be at home talking to her parents wearing this ridiculous mask? She surely should have taken this off. So. It, it tries, it, it wants to kind of be, I think, a big, grand kind of uh, uh, role-playing experience. The first four hours don't build up enough to have <clears throat> made me think, cool, I'm happy to just run through that again. Yeah. Whether I can skip so... part of it, you know, it's, it's part of it, a tutorial, and I can skip it, I don't know. So I just didn't have the will <laughs> to yeah. even try. Yeah. Because I, I just thought in a game like this, even though it's like early stages and tutorial, you can't really get around it. But after that, is there? Do you not think there'd be enough variety in the gameplay to, you know, despite going over the four hours again? But, but mm. is there not enough there? To be like, okay, I'll try. I don't know. Maybe this character. I'll try this tactic. I'll so there was no, there, there were no new characters. Um, I didn't right. have the ability or didn't have any tool tip that suggested to me that my characters could jump between different classes in any way. Mm. So every combat experience in those four hours was exactly the same. Okay, the the, uh, the, so the, the amount of no enemies. Like enemy? So the amount of yeah. enemies changed, and the enemies right. themselves changed at least their models. But a lot of right. it is just cool. This one charges you. This one shoots at you. This one mm -hmm. uh, 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 creates other kind of like robots and shit, which will fly around and try and shoot you from distance. So you want to kill them first rather than the things that it's created. Kind of. There's a little bit of variety in there, but mm -hmm. not enough that it's not just kind of like I've gone to a new dungeon and it's palette swap yeah. of characters yeah. and the same kinds of enemies. So I need to approach this in very similar kinds of ways um it, mm -hmm. it did a few little fun things so there were traps uh, uh, um uh, like a mounted turret that i could sneak up to and without having any skill or hacking that my character could just turn on the enemies sure mm -hmm. i'll do that that's, that seems like a an easy thing to do to kill one of them before i have to engage in this combat kind of thing but it's all a bit kind of not thought through and right. just a little mm. bit kind of surface level on a lot of the stuff so yeah. far within those first yeah. four hours big caveat first four hours right um, yeah but again in a, in a way that i'm not interested in finding out whether it does anymore either uh That's you know fair. it's like cool i can just walk up to this thing and it it takes me five seconds to make it mine and now the turret will shoot enemies which come into view yeah cool okay i mean i mean there's it's hard to get these right isn't it Good very much game. yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and if it's not doing anything for you in the first four hours i mean that's a pretty decent shake it then mm. yeah yeah, and, you know, I've not played Baldur's Gate 3. I very much enjoyed, uh, you know, I like Baldur's Gate. I like that Pillars of Eternity, that style of game. And I thought, mm -hmm. oh, this is, the, I, 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 uh, uh, it came in as a, a an email for a, a code uh, request. And I'm like, yes, this seems like it might fit that space. Um, but it didn't, just didn't hit with me in those first mm -hmm. few hours to, to, mm -hmm. to want to progress anymore. So um, hopefully it's getting some reasonable kind of reviews. I, I would imagine... This is mostly positive on yeah. Steam. Good, so. good. I'm glad. Mm -hmm. and that, that's really nice. Mm -hmm. you know, if people have come off again, come off the back of Board of Gate 3 and they want something similar, I think Dark Envoy probably released at a reasonable kind of distance to, to, to Board mm -hmm. of Gate 3 to then get people ticking over within that space. I mean, like, yeah, cool, mm -hmm. I want something slightly different but similar um so uh, i'm glad that it's um you know those reviews are mostly positive um it is by a, a developer called event horizon it's self-published um i uh don't know their other game tower of time which came out back in 2018 um so they've obviously been working on dark envoy if they're not contracted out and freelancing for other kind of studios to provide support mm. and stuff, working on this game for a fair chunk of time, sort of five years. So a lot mm. has gone into it, um, but just, just not enough for me to stick it out, really. That's good, sir. Yeah. 
Um, so yes, uh, that's Dark Envoy. Who knows whether I'll return to it? I, maybe, probably not. But, yeah. Uh, let's There's move on. Many. Yeah, There's absolutely. Many too many games. Mm, speaking of too many games, I have multiple things to talk about this week. <gasps> cool. Go. Well, that's good because I haven't played anything. So, <laughs> uh, uh, that was and I be, thought yeah. we might have been done for the podcast after being um, just nail the beer now. Dark Absolutely, Envoy. nail the beer. We're done. <laughs> See you later. Uh, no, go, go. Um, the, the floor is yours for yeah. So forever. Uh, I have a new housemate. Hmm. He's um, my name's Keith. He's great. He uh, is a teaching fellow here for a year, and it was in, I'm sure long time listeners know this time last year. Well, maybe like a month ago. 13 months ago, I had a hard time finding a place to live in Durham. Yes. I'm mm-hmm. going to move. Um, Keith had less time because I had the whole month of September and he was hired when I got my permanent job that same week. So like less than two weeks before term started. Wow. And he mm-hmm. lives in Dublin uh, where he has a wife and three young children. Oh, shit. Right. Yeah. So Jesus. Keith is... Well, we arranged the schedule so he would at least have Fridays off so he mm-hmm. could go home reasonable amount of time he's great um but obviously with that between ph uh, grad school and um family he hasn't played games a lot so it's been kind of lovely because i was just like oh i was Someone i turned on the switch games. which i hadn't turned on for ages <laughs> uh and i got to watch someone play the first hour of Untitled Goose Game, nice. having no uh, idea what the one. hell it is, yep. and it was, yes. <laughs> or sorry, ah. very good. <laughs> it, I forgot how fucking quaint and lovely and just well thought out and dumb that game is. Like, just all of the details are so dumb, but so well done. <laughs> like, there's a moment where you um, you can pick up a, like a, an empty milk bottle. Hmm. And if you hit the honk button, then the <laughs> sound waves they draw are muffled, and it's it's muffled. It goes, oh, oh. Uh, yeah. That's and like good. stupid yeah. shit like that. You're like, there's no reason you should have coded this, <laughs> but I'm so happy you coded this. What I love is like, it's, it's, I think the team are from uh, Australia, and yet they made like the most British game ever. Yes, very <laughs> it's, like, yes. it's very yeah, impressive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, they're definitely um, here, living in Durham. In this in this part of Durham, it definitely felt like that goose was just around the corner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's a lot of green spaces surrounding Durham. It's quite a like thin town in that sense, where it's a bunch of like mm-hmm. more recent builds in brick than like say the heart of Bristol, right? Yep. Um, and so it's just like, yep, this is what it is. There's mm-hmm. nature. Like if I walk for ten minutes in that direction, I hit nature. Ten minutes in that direction, I hit nature, and of course there's this is exactly where a goose would run a mic. <laughs> um, um, I, I was just having a quick look uh, on Steam, and I very much love the mm. description of the game. Uh, mm. It's a lovely morning in the village, and you are a horrible goose. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, yes, perfect. Yeah, because I think oh, the really developers said like, because there's no geese in Australia, and they're like. We've heard stories about geese. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god! Good. It does have the user-defined tag "villain protagonist." <laughs> oh, that's very good. I mean, I've never, I've never seen this tag before. Um, <laughs> what, what it, it, so it fe- it goes. It features a horrible goose. Parentheses. That's you. A town full of people just trying to get on with their day. Parentheses. You hate them. A dedicated honk <laughs> button. Parentheses, three exclamation points. Nice. Like, <laughs> hmm. it's but one thing that yeah. I, um, I I didn't try and I kind of regret, but I played this start to finish like right away. Mm. Yeah. So I've never yeah. played the two player goose game. Yeah. It was yeah, an update that, that yes, Ben. Oh. They updated it with mm-hmm. two geese, two furious. <laughs> <laughs> and so but i just i wanted to watch keith do it by himself and like yeah. so i just was like a little back cd of like he's like oh, i'm not sure what to do mm. i'm like oh why don't you try doing this but like 
I don't want to restart it with with dual geesing. Mm, absolutely. <laughs> I didn't uh, know. Yeah, I remember seeing that at like EGX, and I think it was at like the following month after EGX, whichever year that was. And I'm not even exaggerating; it was the longest queue at EGX that year. Oh like, yeah, I think yeah. it might have even been part of like a Nintendo booth and i don't know what nintendo games came out that year or whatever but it was literally the longest queue there and it's like mm. it's out in a month people <laughs> why yeah. are you queuing like four hours to play this goose game uh it's but yeah probably the most fun they were they, they're gonna have that day probably it is a very good game i did i did enjoy my time with it yeah yeah it's just one of those it's just like yeah sort of stealth game with you know agent 47 like Garroting everybody's throats. <laughs> make, make one a goose. Solid snake. Yeah. I just love how much of an asshole you are. Absolutely, <laughs> you just, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just like, they need to make one with like a cat. <laughs> like, I, I, like, I, mm. Oh, that'd be very yeah, good. Stray, Stray didn't have yeah. enough um, assholery. Cat yeah. assholing. Just knocking shit yeah. off. You could knock shit off. There was mm-hmm. there was a little yeah. kind of side thing where actually. You, you could gain access to a building by knocking some paint yeah. off of a wall. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I remember that. Um, and there's, there's a few things. Yeah, there's a few things. But definitely, mm-hmm. we, need, we, need, we need more villain protagonist games that mm-hmm. aren't, uh, you know, uh, the, the ones that came up were like Carrion and stuff, which is mm-hmm. yes, villain protagonist, but fucking demonic no. monster that eats everything. <laughs> we just need, like, mundane shit. Just yeah, you know, pushing we'll be, stuff like, off yeah. the wall. <laughs> I was oh, just saying, that's anthropocentric ass. gaming as well, but I guess you really are... Humans are centered because the goose doesn't want to mess up other animals' days, just wants to mess up humans' days. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a kind of anthropocentric yeah. in that sense. Well, it just chases the boy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the, like, trap the boy in the <laughs> phone booth? Boy, yeah. <laughs> oh, that and that, boy. that boy you harass so much you like me because it's like the second level i think or area yeah. right mm-hmm. but like you scare him out of his glasses and then you grab glasses from the shop this. and make him put those on for no reason and then and then the rest of the scene he's just wearing the wrong glasses <laughs> yeah and then you like steal his toy airplane and you put it in their shop on the toy table and he tries to just pick up his toy and then the shopkeep lady yells at him and makes him buy it and you're like what? It's so horrendous. And and the the ending is probably one of the best endings in video games, which I won't spoil for anyone who Mm, hasn't played it, but mm. just that last sequence (laughs) of what you get. (laughs) It's just, it's so good. It is very um, good, yeah. Yeah. No, like, the next door's cat was just, it took like four of us to usher her out. She like kept running back in the house. I don't know what was wrong with her. She was on a tear (laughs) today. It's like, (laughs) you've been fed. Please get out. <laughs> He's asked you nicely <laughs> several times. Just, Happy just your beds howling. Are so warm. And, uh, she, she's, uh, yeah, she was awful this morning. It was like, I got, I have to sit my exam today, and you're not like to have any distractions. I don't want to mm. like suddenly turn around because someone accidentally left a window open and just have this cat in here. <laughs> <laughs> Exams, so. oh, and really it just funny. voids my exams. So it's like you need to calm down. You need to be calm down. Yeah, cats are great. I love. Suddenly started yeah. sneezing. Um... Oh, yeah, it's that that fifteen percent. I discovered this, uh, by the way, um, mm. when I was recording the uh, upcoming new Out of Lives podcast with um, mm. Dave and Bob. But did you know? That Discord now has a soundboard? But the best part is, because we record everything on Audacity, whatever I use this soundboard on won't be recorded because of the nature of the audio streams, I'm pretty sure. So, like, even though... Yes, on Audacity, no. But on the video version, uh, OBS will capture it. Yes. Oh, good. <laughs> it's cool. dumb, but I love it. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. bro, where is this? Where it's is it's literally this? so if you look in in right under the, the the thing that usually goes all sour, that's like the video connection quality. Mm. 
There's the turn off camera, the share your screen, oh, yeah. and there's open soundboard, and it's got. <laughs> yeah, sad part <laughs> trombone, crickets, golf clap, quack, air horn, and. But I'm what have they done? Brilliant. What have they... This should not be well, here, because well, I so see that... how this podcast is going to go forward. <laughs> the thing is, it's, it's very good that the podcast itself can't. No, because... it, otherwise we would abuse it. But That's now it's true, just like yes. the listeners will have no idea what we're laughing at half the time, yeah, it... which is for the, the case anyway. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah. let's move on then. Did from... Keith enjoy? Oh, was, yes, uh, he yeah, did. Yeah, yes. did Keith um, enjoy... He definitely. Yeah. Um, it, it it was definitely a. I'm not sure what to do. Mm. Uh, part parts of the f- first few, like after the first yeah, so ones. Some of, um, some of the stuff in there is. You know, it's tricky. Some esoteric thinking, and mm-hmm. if you haven't played games in a while, right? Like, so let's put it this way: he's found a Windows 11 running executable, so we can play Civ 2 together. <laughs> nice, very nice. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to it. And like again, this was a thing. It's like, oh, we both had a Civ 2 era. We definitely have to try this. Yeah, like, I'm not. I mean, I just mean like that. That's I don't the know thing this he's guy, excited but about. he's not excited about playing Goose that Game. That sounds like he a... enjoyed it. That sounds like something a guy called Keith would play. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. We've all um, loved Keith. My, my uncle's called Keith, so we've all loved Keith so there. So uh, I mean, like, yeah, we, a guy yeah. called Keith <laughs> would play Civilization. I do remember for uh, for a mate's birthday, we must have been like 17, maybe. So we couldn't go out. And for his birthday, um, we basically took my PC to his house and uh linked them up so we had two pcs mm. linked up and there were four of us basically just got high as fuck and mm. drank a load uh because we couldn't do that out in the street um and mm. Mm. uh we played uh, total annihilation oh uh, wow just nice. which is like a command and conquer style game if, if people mm-hmm. don't know uh, we played that for hours and i remember at some point, I'm like, I've checked out. I'm not. I'm. I'm done for the evening. And uh, mm-hmm. the other two of the other people, uh, Jack and Tom, they stayed up till three in the morning, uh, building up armies. They're like, we won't attack each other. Let's just let's just build. Let's just build. So we can have this like grand battle in total annihilation. And one of the PCs just died. Shat and the bed. That was like four hours of them just playing and playing and building and building and building. Just gone. Like, oh, good. Uh, Brilliant. Now it's time to have but... another smoke and go to sleep. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good birthday. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's how every birthday should be. Um... <laughs> Not the 3 a.m. part. I couldn't have No, that, in bed yeah. by 10. Yeah. Yeah. That, was yeah. My, that was my birthday yesterday, in bed by 10. <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward to that. Oh, yeah. I mean, I didn't say it in person, so happy mm. birthday. Thank yes, you. true. Happy old, birthday. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Cheers, bro. Um, also, I can say it in sure. person, in person, because I'm going to be in Bristol in tomorrow days. through yes. Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, and I've got a treat to bring to you. Oh, yes. Ooh. There might be a second treat. Oh. oh don't promise him it's a good time. Mm. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you mentioned you'd had multiple <laughs> things, multiple games. I perhaps, did. Multiple things I still do. Okay. Um, the reason why the switch was turned on was actually to because um, I caved and bought Super Mario Wonder. Ah, Ooh, nice. And I was like, oh, I just got this game. And Keith's like, oh, it's a Super Mario game. Like, and and again. Missed this entire era between Super Mario World and now, and it's like it plays just like Super Mario World. I really <laughs> like the way it handles. Um, mm. It really yeah, does remind me of I'm Mario Three, played. Mario World. Um, I mean, let's not be crazy. Um, oh, I said reminds me. That no, we will not be smirch. To be fair, reminds is a similarity. It doesn't have to be. Yeah, same. yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think what yeah, I'm saying no, is I've, I, uh, the to be honest, I haven't Mario played, much played in it. between have mm. felt more haven't felt that similar in this way. Mm. I There's like a momentum Mario... or something that they've figured out how to go back to. 
It just yeah, feels uh, a lot more. It does tight. feel better, yeah, because uh, those U games are just U games. They're okay. I think the, the 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 Super Mario Bros. U or whatever it is. I don't know. I think I played at least one of them. Um, mm. I mean, those are just looked ugly and soulless anyway. But um, they look like really phone in games, but they play okay. I think like with enough. Knowing going into those because I I came to those much later than you know when they were first released, but going into them and just being like, okay, I know this isn't going to be that good. I think then you'll have a good time with those. Um, mm. Giving Mario the kind of like wall slide, I think, is the worst mechanic and the biggest mistake the Mario franchise has ever done. I can't stand it. I can't remember if this game has it. A wall uh, slide. I think it just like like when you know, say if you're jumping against a pipe, mm. you like sort of like can just jump back off it. Ah, uh, like, like yeah. it's like you jump onto it, it slows you down. And there's a little yes, and then you can slide. Yeah, right. Yeah, so I think it doesn't yeah. have wall slide. Okay. It just has wall jumping. But you, I don't. Yeah, I, I don't like that wall jumping. Yeah, whatever. I I, I can't stand that. Like Celeste, um, uh, Celeste did right. So let's have like that yeah, but slide that's kind a, of. That's a different game. No, no, absolutely, but just. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, like the, like tons of platformers have it. Mm. It's just mm. not right in a Mario game for me. It's like it's weird. <laughs> it's it shouldn't exist. It sh- I shouldn't be able to stop myself from falling down a hole by doing a wall jump. Right. Sure. It's, it's not right. <laughs> He's a plumber. <laughs> the gravity would take him down. Mario cannot wall slide. Mm. Yeah. But but yeah, how how is it? I mean, I've played it in a certain way, but not much of it because, as you lot know about me, uh, know about me, um, I like to tinker. And when mm. I tinker and get a game running, I don't ever touch the game because I am mm. satisfied by With just getting it running. With the tinker. So, I might go back to it, especially if I can make it run at a steady 60 frames. Um, mm. But... Yeah, um, I might just, just, to, just wait and just play if my nephew... interrupt somewhere. Mm-hmm. I don't know where I'm getting this from. Is someone being called on Skype somewhere? I think it's... Uh... It's not me. I don't hear anything. Well, I hear... Well, it's I hear very, it very slight. Oh, that's the Skype ringtone or something. It's very I mean, like tiny, tiny little ringtone. This is the back. Yes, running. yeah, yes. Hold on. <laughs> My sister has this alarm. <laughs> oh, it's an alarm. Okay, you, okay. Yeah, um, you heard that over this. Yeah, I did hear something. I didn't. Like tingling. Maybe I'm going deaf if you could hear it. <laughs> a, little, a little tingle. It's, I think it's because mm. I hear it all the time. All the time. <laughs> uh, Just I blocked think it it's out. Because instead of making me go insane <laughs> which it used to i think i started to block it out so. i'm like turn it off yeah it just seems to stop now yeah it's definitely um, stopped. It has stopped. yeah good so yeah. oh no let me deal with this because i'm angry <laughs> <laughs> turn your off no, she's Maybe done. I have she's just like off. blocked off. it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll deal with that later. Slight interruption. Okay. Yeah, but it's just like, I mean, I don't care about the recording. It's just like, it, this happens all the time. It's like in the morning as well. It's like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, it's like when if you know it's gonna go. Oh, just lying in bed. Phone by it. Lying in yeah, bed is going. It's an alarm. And going and going and going. It's like oh. It's, it's like, it has a set time. I don't even know what the times are. It, like sometimes it's morning. So I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why it is. This is like just set for nine forty two. Just just goes off. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, um, Super Mario. Super Mario. Yeah, yeah Super Mario. I really like it. Um, I think it was put, making it in the Flower Kingdom and making it so that means something, in a way that like. Mario Kart has like the mushroom cup and the flower cup mm-hmm. and the star cup and they're all the same. Giving like a distinct persona to the flower kingdom uh, was a neat idea because we just always 
it's most of the Mario games take place in the Mushroom Kingdom, but we have fire flowers and we have all these things and yeah. having like on the second level having fucking singing piranha plants is hilarious and mm-hmm. great. Um mm-hmm. and the the first power up you get being the elephant, I think, was also a really smart move. I don't know if the elephant's new to this game or in one of the middle ones it I never is, played. Yeah. No, um, but again, so really funny. smart because you, yeah, it just it's, it's front loads a lot of the new stuff in a way that doesn't mm-hmm. take away from stupid pl- talking flowers. Oh, I, I I haven't even looked in the menu to figure out how to turn them off. I, My brain immediately well, was like, no. "You're going to pretend this doesn't exist." <laughs> Like that alarm. That I yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly yeah. like that. Like, I remember yeah. you, you you talking about those, and I was like, "Oh, here they come!" And I was like, "Oh, all right." And then, like three levels later, I'm like, "I don't know if these things do a thing." And then I'm like, "Oh no, I'm just actively being tuning them out." Yeah, but apparently there's a velocity slider, so that's good. Yeah. I'm gonna turn those stupid plants right down, so mm. I don't need to be like, "Oh, hi, Mario, order us," and just like. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. So what I would say is, it's like the first <laughs> worlds are super. It, it's a pretty easy game, all considered things. Oh, like, uh, yeah, yeah. But I just mean like to get because there's two. Um, is it too easy games. though, or is there like actual platforming challenge in it? Yeah. So there's two wonder seeds per level, and the first couple areas we kind of just accidentally got both without really trying. Uh, mm-hmm. They have. I obviously we found a couple secret areas, which meant which helped because, um, it's gated, right? So you need X number of wonder seeds in order to like get uh, free the castle from a thing, so that you can finish the castle or unlock a path, right? Isn't it unfree the toads or whatever it is? Um, and that's all fine. Uh, and I think after this, in the second main, like a post first castle basically mm-hmm. um the areas got a little hard. the challenge was clearly ramping up but there's so many ways to get seeds and like because each level has two uh progression is gated at a really low barrier right obviously if you're a completionist or you want the challenge you're gonna try and double seed each zone and i unlocked a thing that was like a four star difficulty level and sure yeah. enough we lost all our lives and had to use <laughs> some of the currency to buy more lives because it was like, nope, because of course, when you play in two player, when you uh, lose, you lose two lives. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so, in a way, tra- figuring out that that level was like real tough and don't know how to handle it was just like crushing us because we were both just trying to figure out what was going on. But like, if one person walked in, you would figure it out. Figure out. Ah, maybe I'll come back after trying three times. We did, but we lost six lives in the in the in the battle because there was two of us, right? And we only had seven. Um, so but, there is challenge. Yeah, and the, and like it's a secret area. Like I, I unlocked a path, right. and you have to walk up to a mountain, and it literally says what I like is the level says how many seeds it has, and then what difficulty. And the main path tends to be difficulty one or two. And then on no, an easy make option... it five. Every make every <laughs> normal level five. If the, if the babies can't cope with um, it, then, and then you know. I, I suspect it'll ramp to three threes more often because again, this was the beginning hour ish of the game, right? Um, hour and a half, two mm-hmm. hours. That's so um, weird having like difficulty levels in a Mario game. Yeah, I think it's fine just because, like I said, when you hit that f- when at that four star, when it was like, oh, we've just been crushed. Mm-hmm. We know it's not going to get any better. It's a four-star difficulty, and we haven't really seen threes. Why don't we just, like, come back to this some other time? And then, sure enough, mm-hmm. we tried the three, and the first three-star level... And also, I wasn't paying attention. Usually, I was just walking and hit start. But the first three, three-star level we did was the first one of the first ones where we didn't accidentally stumble into the second Wonder Seed. Because, obviously, you had to do something else to unlock the part of the level that allowed you to free it basically because mm. basically there's all in all the levels there's like you if you can find the way to unlock a wonder flower which is essentially like a fire flower that's like iridescent blue it then like uh, flips the level on you and, and yeah. you kind of go into like a shadow realm version and a whole bunch of stuff happens and you're now doing a different part of the level he's just you succeed at it you then get the seed 
Oh, and then if hard. you finish the level, you get the other seed. And so finishing the level gets one seed. I'm finding the findings on, I'm assuming, finding the path to get you to get to the bonus area and then completing it, it gets you the second mm -hmm. seed. And I think okay. that middle bit of finding the path, it will be less obvious as the game goes on. Because, mm -hmm. like, we just did it. So, like, we had almost one and a half times the number of seeds by the time we got to the first gate. It was like, oh, I'm, I'm, and sure enough, the second gate, it was like, we had, I think we had 12 or 13 seeds. We had 12 seeds and we needed 10 and the next gate was 14 and we had unlocked five levels. It's like, okay, well, we, yeah. we played one level and immediately it was like, well, we can, we can just ignore the rest of this area because we could already get past the 14 gate. So I, I yeah. it's clearly made so that if you don't want the challenge or if you just want to play uh, the game of get through the level, progress the uh, that'll just work with the number of levels there are uh so that yeah, you don't have right, to like right, right, do nice. the bonus content nintendo games yeah yeah, yeah. makes sense just mm. i don't know maybe we should make the mario series just gritty and inaccessible for most people Mate, mm. what, would you me. change your name no so, so Mario's the guy who has the, is the easy peasy baby game, and Wario is the like oh, no, bunch of weird no, 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 mini games. It's Mario. We just we just gatekeep people out of this. You know, we don't make baby Mario games like Odyssey. We get we get like so just um baby it, game. But it's yeah. like I I was looking through thinking um there must be like Mario must be one of the most prolific like game series. There must be so many of these games. That it's got to be the, the the most used kind of title, mm. and, and and the Mario series must have the most amount of games in it, whether they're two D, three D, you know, whatever. But obviously, running back to him featuring in Donkey Kong and stuff like that, right? So you got mm. you got Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Junior. Then you got Mario Bros. Mario Brothers or Mario Bros. Special. Then there's a game called Wrecking Crew, which is oh. is, is Mario. Right. Yeah, and but then that's it jumps the best to, one. and then it jumps to Super Mario <laughs> Bros. Yeah, and so that's the... that is then everything moving forward, right? Suddenly, like Super mm. Mario Bros. That's that's how we're moving forward with everything, um, and whether then that you get all the way through to, and okay, some things drop the, um, they don't drop the Super, so you've still got Super Mario Galaxy, um, Super Paper Mario, Super Mario Brothers. Uh, super, new Super Mario Brothers, you know all of these uh, more modern games. Super Mario 3D Land, you know, even up to to now, Super Mario Maker, really good. Super is added on, right? So then you you jump to the next thing. It's like Dragon Ball. You've got Dragon Ball, then you've got <laughs> Dragon Ball Z, then you've got Dragon Ball GT. They're just about to make a Dragon Ball uh, something else as well. Super already um, came out. So really super. So you could just be like <laughs> Ultra Mario Bros. And just just yeah. add a, just change it very slightly and just fuck around <laughs> with it so much because you know obviously this is what is it that's, super, that's super mario Ma maker super <laughs> mario bros wonder is that like the full title yeah. of the game so we're still in this like super period which has lasted for 40 mm. years essentially um mm. that, you know just just mario bros was kind of like two games and donkey kong and, and mm. wrecking crew sort of thing uh, but yeah, just just chuck it in like Ultra Mario. Well, I mean, Wrecking Crew is the Extreme game that Mario when you Bros. play <laughs> when you play um, two player on Super Mario Brothers three. Oh. If you go into a level you've already finished, you play mm. around a Wrecking Crew. Mm. Have you not done this? No. And then whoever wins that, it's their turn now. No. Oh. Have you? What have you? Have you really never no. played Wrecking Crew within Mario Bros. Three? No. No. Oh my God! I didn't. I thought everyone knew. Get a <clears throat> turn on your <laughs> NES. Get a ROM. I do have one, and I yeah. also have the analog pocket, so that can be easily mm. done. Just as experimentation, mm. absolutely good. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. I. I. I now. If we wanted to go in the gritty way, Extreme Mario Brothers is mm. the. Uh, is the jump. I yeah, I mean, I it's, it's, it. it's going to be it. Extreme Mario Bros. It's going to be like Fist of the North Star style anime <laughs> graphics and aesthetics. Mm. No, it's just pure blood every fucking where. <laughs> Make it look like yeah. Super Mario Bros. Oh 3. my god, Mar yeah. you know what? Really yeah, it, it's the same. It's the same levels, etc. Mm. But you have 
a slow mo button, and a katana. <laughs> <laughs> katana. So yeah. you do the like. Yeah. Or it's more like, uh, or it's more like something like blasphemous, where you every every <laughs> ki- or like Dark Souls or every kill is like some ridiculous animation. <laughs> To actually yeah. like batter the shit out like... of things with his fists. <laughs> the Goombas are like, you need to repent. Uh, a penitent <laughs> one. Nice. Which is where they all just start. Like, of... You get to like level three, and the Goombas see you come and just run away because your reputation <laughs> precedes you massively. And they're like, no! And Mario there was, still there just was a mod them that made the, the um... shit out of them. <laughs> <laughs> there was a mod that made all the flowers uh, like hurl expletives at you. Um, but oh I yeah! Oh man! Nintendo removed the video of it. Oh, <laughs> it of course like they violent. did. Of course they did. I'm like, I'm gonna kill you, kill you, you know. And just like, <laughs> we need we know, need yeah. someone to do like a mod yeah. where it's all just in like Gary Boosie's voice or something. So again, <laughs> extremely aggressive, <laughs> just like really insane, or just Nicolas Cage, just some, just the flowers, just like you walk past, like <laughs> fuck you. Oh, good. Thank you. Oh, I, I think I said Wrecking Crew. I meant just the original Mario Bros. arcade game. Ah, right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so if, 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 if yeah. you go on the same spot as the other... So Mario and Luigi are in the same spot, and then you try and go <laughs> into that level, it does a Mario Bros. minigame. Which I assume I mean, you also it's... didn't know, because otherwise you would have corrected no. me. No. Yeah. yeah, it's... No. It's re- There's I'm so super... many hidden things in those games, mm. though. That is like... It's like, oh yeah, I forget that was there. I'm still discovering things in that game, like, what, 30 years on, so. Oh yeah, I, good, I mean, I used to do that all the time and annoyed my sisters because they wanted to play the regular game. <laughs> but now, now, you know, apparently I've been, like, poking at the borders of games since I was a wee lad. Yes. Because I just assumed everyone knew that because obviously you try to go into the same level as someone else. Mm. No. Yeah. Um, You've the... been broken for a time, is what you're saying. Oh. Yeah, You've yeah. been um, a rebel without a cause. Oh, I'm, I'm <laughs> glad you said that. I was about to say, oh, you've been talking to my ex girlfriend. But... <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't work if it's a rebel without a cause. Um, um, Have we got the, the last the, the, thing? Yes. Uh, was I finally got around to playing Venba, but uh, only oh, the nice. first few chapters, okay. and it's great and wonderful, and I love it, and I mm-hmm. I'm happy given the mm-hmm. time. If we want to talk about that next week, I should finish it by then. Um, it's great. Okay. It's yeah. the art style is lovely. I want to say just if you do play it, I actually think you should play with headphones um, because mm. the the yeah, sound is really, sound crackle. design is very good. Mm. Um, even, yeah, the, even I think they the, recorded actual like cooking sense. <laughs> yeah. yeah but the, also even the like plot points where you're walking around and stuff the foley's really good mm-hmm. and like i i started it on the steam deck without um my headphones in and then when i put them in because i didn't want to bother keith i was like oh this is well worth it this is like this isn't just like a, oh like a lot of cooking games just have sounds and a lot of games like mm. this that are indie you could easily just be generic scoring but they've really put effort in the sound stage and like the sound effects, especially in the plot parts, are well thought out, and they mm. really do put. They really do have good narrative push. Because uh, if you don't know, it's like about an immigrant, an Indian family who moved to Canada and have a baby in the eighties, and it's but it's really about cooking meals on important dates or times and pivotal moments in their lives, and then the meals they have around there. And you're yeah. essentially playing a cooking game every moment but the moments are the thing that drives you to want to keep playing the game i would say mm-hmm. i'm really interested in the story um yeah oh really like yeah you like you beat it lucy yeah um, I beat it and wrote that um uh thing on, which i really needed to get back to my blog series mm-hmm. 9 at substack.com i think thank you thank you uh yeah it's uh, I need I need to get back to writing for it. Um, uh, but yes, uh, I wrote about it there because yeah, it's, it's it's a nice little game, mm. very nice. And I saw uh, recently on um, Twitter that they are actually adding like a 
in-game like actual recipe book for people to. Oh wow! Uh, oh, I was gonna say because that was my one disappointment was the recipe book. I I was hoping yeah. that when you opened the book you would see our recipe, but I thought it would just be like in like a, do... a different menu, like um yeah, just like in you know extra extras in the in the main menu, just yeah. like actual recipes, and it's like. I thought that was like yeah, a bit of a miss. I thought that was just like a shoe on to be in there, but a shoe in to be there, but it wasn't there. But they're adding it, which is really cool. So yeah, that is enough really people cool. obviously said something about it. So, so yeah. Wait till then. There's the hardback version. Like the amount of game. Uh, uh, there's there is definitely a. I don't know who it is, but um, there are a bunch of cooking books right that are video game themed. So oh, there's yeah, been like the Final are, Fantasy yeah. fourteen mm. uh, cookbook, which is like the what? meals the meals that you oh. can cook from Final yeah. Fantasy fourteen. Someone has actually created the proper recipe for people to mm -hmm. make these things. That's and there's really a, I think funny. there's a Skyrim <laughs> one. There's yeah, a there's bunch, a there's an absolute bunch. So to have an actual oh, gosh, cooking had... game yeah. that is That's, trying yeah. to be authentic in the kind of food that it's making and mm -hmm. actually how it's made would be a really mm. interesting concept to actually just come out as a cookbook. You know, just yeah, a proper that would be to like be the most beautiful. They should use like actual pictures and images from yeah, the game. Yeah, yeah. Because would, it would be like the prettiest cookbook mm -hmm. ever. <laughs> you know? Very, so, such a colourful game. Um, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, to be honest, I'm not sure we'll end up talking too much about it no, in it the future. It would be nice but... to hear you closing thoughts about it yeah i was gonna yeah. say i think another really short segment but like basically it's a puzzle game right like the, yeah. the the premise is the cookbook is old and you're finally starting you finally it's your your mother's cookbook that she made when you moved from india and put all her recipes in but you don't use it that much and then because it's like oh it, little plot point of like oh why don't we actually cook that thing or i want or like I'm feeling homesick or, you know, these types of things. Um, and then because it's old, some bits are missing and you mm -hmm. figure it out. And like mm -hmm. thus far, uh, pretty straightforward. The puzzles aren't that terrible. Yeah. Um, Especially the second recipe annoyed me because <laughs> I, uh, I just, I just, I, st I stared at it and I was like, I, I didn't even think about dry blending rice. I always think about blending uh, as a wet yeah. thing for some reason. Mm -hmm. And so that was like the one thing in my brain that I was like, oh, wait, why why am I putting the water in this? And sure enough, all it was, because like, I knew the steps it wanted me to do, but for some reason I just kept putting water in the blender. And so it wouldn't let me sieve the clump D rice to re-blend mm -hmm. it. And I was like, I know what I'm supposed to do. It's mm -hmm. very obvious from the thing, what am I doing wrong? And it was just this, like, every time I started, I would just put water in the blender and I didn't even think, what am I doing? And then if I was like, oh, right, of course, you're making flour, you're making rice flour. <laughs> Obviously it can't be wet, a dip <laughs> It was like it was a really interesting like like a psychological moment of I don't know why I just keep put like the, it just didn't even cross my mind not yeah. to for until like I was like getting the same loop of nope something's gone wrong and I was like oh yeah. I'm an idiot yeah there, there were some things where it was like I know how to cook a curry just let me do it you know what I mean? right yeah, I'm, not yeah, gonna, yeah. I'm not gonna put the mustard seasoning at the end just let me I know what I'm doing but it's like no you still have to just a game it yeah no yeah. it's a game <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it it is. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm interested oh, yeah. in I think maybe uh, uh, more around like how you feel about the game and stuff like that. But that I think that's maybe something we can. Touch I think on uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think the next, the next time we talk about it, when it's done, we can talk about like my feelings about the whole thing, and then like mm. obviously as the the boy who was born to immigrant parents who came to Canada in the '80s, um, I might have some interesting thoughts. Yeah. Although um, different cultural background on journey to sure to canada but i think that was the whole point was canada was had its doors open at that time so mm -hmm. regardless mm -hmm. of the reasoning why this was a way a place where immigrants could come mm -hmm. good it'd be um, good to get into that and i said fuck yeah. that place i'm moving to england the place that colonized where i <laughs> my family came from and where i was born <laughs> Yay! let's go and see where yeah. it all started 
Oh, oh no. Um, yeah. And then they want to, you know... Oh, maybe that's send it. People it's just back. so fucking wet these days that I just assumed yeah. water was involved everywhere. <laughs> Sorry, it's been yeah. raining like... Water everywhere here. The <laughs> car park, uh, uh, the university car park that's nearest to my building um, flooded and they, they like sent an email out being like, so just so you know, it's starting to flood and the water's filling up. So if you have a car parked in this uh, in the parking uh, garage, like may maybe move it. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> maybe it's already underwater. Yeah, <laughs> it's already all the way down the road. <laughs> the, um, Did you know you owned current the current <laughs> away? Yeah, <laughs> this is what Ooh, I keep saying to Kim. She's like. Kim keeps saying, "How do we? How do we prep? How do we get prepared for kind of the end of the world? Should we? Uh, not the mm. end of the world, but, 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 but uh, she's like, should we get solar panels? And I'm like, well, that would be good. in you know, at the moment, yeah, sure, we can power the the life Stuck that we up have. On the actually, morphine when and, we're all underwater, the... we need a boat, mate. Get a boat. Mm. Water as... world. Just yeah, ask exactly. Kevin Costner. We need a boat. Yeah. We need as many painkillers as possible, just so we can, you know, trade them." when we need to mm. uh, and that's oh, it i was thinking of an easier way out than that with the painkiller <laughs> <laughs> okay oh, do you want to <laughs> battle through the apocalypse i could be kevin costner ahead. i can trade painkillers no. for things that we need i'd be the uh person in bioshock like on the toilet um you know scribbled on the walls <laughs> like <laughs> it's not it's not worth it <laughs> just done i'd be the environmental storytelling in a game yes yeah 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 <laughs> Just Lucy's notes, yeah. just as you keep finding them. As I wouldn't even leave a note. I'd be like, screw this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad this is where we have ended for the week. Um, <laughs> let's talk about the beers. Adam, we'll come back to you. I saw you just finishing it. Um, mm. so no, I, st I still have thoughts. probably like a fifth. Oh, okay. It's very strong. Mm. Um, it's really good. I, I wouldn't have two. Okay. I think at the end of this, I'll have enough to, just because even with it being soaked into my palate, like that sweetness is there. Um, mm. And so I wouldn't want, I, I'm not saying like I, now with just this much left, having sip, sipped it for like, you know, an hour or an hour and a half or whatever, um, I'm starting to tire of just that sickliness part of the sweetness. Mm. It okay. really, mm. my palate never got used to that part. Um, and so as like the the pininess is still there and like one of the reasons i've been drinking so slowly is that finish is, is light and long and it has a little bit of that sweetness but mostly in the more multi part like mm. it's paired well and then there's this like light pine note of bitter that also again isn't in your face but it's just a really long and so i don't really i still have a taste on my palate for quite a while before i need to take another sip it's just at this point I'm enjoying almost that more, and so it's like take a small okay. sip, be like, oh, it's a bit sweet, but that fades within 20 seconds, and then I can have like a couple minutes of this light, piney, resiny sweetness, um, and then when that starts to fade, I I'm now okay with getting another hit of a bit too sweet. Mm. That just means like I'm gonna nurse it, but then I'm definitely not gonna want another one after this. Yeah. So this is unlike the bizarre squid ink beer, which was sufficiently just... oddly non-beer, but I would have a second yeah. in a row if yeah, I was still enjoying it. Saying that. Yeah. Hmm. Um. But also, like, I mean, I don't think you should be surprised by that. Like, a fifteen percent beer is going to be its own absolutely. Thing, the odds yeah, of you wanting yeah, a second yeah. one, it's like. Hmm. Um. Differently with this this double cheese uh, from mm. left handed John, I think I could have another one now uh i i it is a bit bigger at 8.4 percent compared to the other beers within this um kind of release within this series but i think it is it's light enough in being a double ipa that it is very easy to drink and i think the the, the kind of the combination of those slightly more earthy toned flavors being quite light and experiencing the little bit of sweetness that that little bit of lime that maybe runs through it as well but by it being medium bodied and being slightly pillowy it's not pillowy it's not a you know it's not a, a pale ale which is lovely and light and fluffy and all that sort of shit it, it, it has aspects of that but it isn't quite there 
but it's there enough that it isn't heavy. It doesn't feel like a double IPA. It's not like viscous and thick or chewy. It's just lovely and light. And I think that leads so easily into being able to, you know, crack another one of these and just drink straight away. It, it very much feels like a, uh, not chuggable, but just an easy drinking beer. Um, and I'd love to experience this on on, on tap and just basically like, cool, mm. that's the beer I'm drinking this evening in the place that we are in. Um, just, just to finish out, I have a small, very small update. Um, mm. Just on the pub round the corner. I went there last night. We, we, we decided for my birthday we'd go round the corner for a beer. Mm. And mm. the pub round the corner has gone from uh, having New Bristol Brewery on cask and a and one tap, which is a Kaleidoscope from Wiper and Troop. Um, mm. They now mm. have the, the cask beer, which I assume is a rotating New Bristol Brewery cask, uh, a constant Kaleidoscope. They now have a rotating Bristol Beer Factory uh, mm. beer on tap. And they've also got, and I don't know whether it's rotating, whether they have this, forever, they've just got Hells from uh, Lost and Grounded in there as well. Nice. It's like, mm. oh shit! There's like four beers here <laughs> that now that options. I can partake mm -hmm. in. It's just I, I don't know whether um, you know, the, the craft beer as such is just penetrating that much more. It's a conversation, mm -hmm. you know, a wider conversation for uh, another day. Probably a whole topic for an episode. But um, it just it just seems to be getting into little spaces and kind of appearing where maybe you wouldn't not you don't ex you don't not expect it to be there you don't mm -hmm. maybe expect the breadth of what you're yeah. going to kind of get from from some sort of spaces and things so uh something maybe to talk about on a on a later date but i just thought i'd update i went to the pub last night i'm like mm -hmm. cool there's four beers now i'm going mm. to drink one of each of these beers brilliant yeah. cool. nice <laughs> i'd have to Sounds leave great. the house to actually find out if that's sure thing. that's yes that, and, um, that is a thing yeah, yeah. Mm, i mean maybe i can now uh, when you have children um, lucy no <laughs> you want to leave the house all the time just for well, entertainment that's purposes. another for, reason for why i'm not gonna have any <laughs> <laughs> good um we'll wrap up this episode uh for this week uh they're the beers that we've drank in the games that we've been played thank you for joining us you can get us in all the usual places at Tanked Up Cast on the socials or go to outoflives.net to look at our faces or our YouTube page. Uh, Lucy, mm. when you do get the time to write some things down, uh, just remind us of the, the substack again. It is juicyloose9 at substack.com. Perfect. And if people have uh, games for you to play things they want you to write about on how do they get to you on social media? I, I, I don't take requests. Yeah, please don't request um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's, that's not true. I would, but it'd have to be some very like weird indie game that I've never heard of. And then like is right up my alley and I'd be like, yeah, dear listener, you probably know me by now. You know, the, you know the buzzwords that get me going. You know mm. the Metroidvanias. You know the pixel art. So, so yeah, if you got those kind of suggestions, um, send them to me at Juicy Loose Nine. Nice. I was going to ask Adol, but he's let the cat out. So I'm at Nova <laughs> underscore forty seven. If you want to shout any beer or video game recommendations, and Adol, mm -hmm. if people want to talk to you, where are you? I'm at the Omniarch on all the things, including Blue Sky and Threads. Oh, you were going to send us a Blue Sky invite. Yeah, I totally forgot. I will do that. <laughs> um, I, like, I, 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 I'm never going to sign up. I mean, it's just... It, 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 just as a, a final two minutes, what's Blue Sky like? Do you go on it much? Do you use it at all? Um, I basically now, instead of going on Twitter on the moment, so where I'm like, oh, I don't know, open a new tab, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Now it's Facebook, Instagram, Threads, Blue Sky, and I close them all real quick. Right. <laughs> Fair. All of them. Fair. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, um, I will say mm. I will say that my last stint of hosting at um 
the last onion minute mm. um it came out last week i think so if you want to hear <laughs> if you want to hear me talk for an hour about a minute five days in a row <laughs> a film uh check out glass onion minute uh I stupidly thought, because of a scheduling issue, that the showrunner took over the guest spot. So it's me hosting five days, which is five minutes of film. Um, and I thought Darren was going to be like, because I'm, I'm the, my episodes are the longest ones. Uh, some people do 15 minutes in and out, <laughs> and I do an hour. And I thought, for sure, Darren, because he has to edit these, will, will rein me in. No, I had to... Shut him up. We hit an hour on all five episodes. I'm like, Darren, this is your fault. This is your editing problem. Mm, nope. Uh, I do think they're fun chats. Uh, I just, uh, I mean, in the same way that when you're not around, Ben, Lucy and I just tend to talk and have very long episodes sure. yeah, yeah. But nothing. that are tangential. It's just, it's going to happen. That's what I do on podcasts because that's what I do in real life. <laughs> I mean, I, I, uh, um, so the uh, the Assassin's Creed uh, podcast of um, uh, the well, the Assassin's Creed episode um, of, remember our, of Remember the Titans, the new uh, Out of Lies podcast, which will be releasing at some point in the next few weeks, I would think. Uh, Dave mm -hmm. has sent me the uh, the file because he's like, I've edited it and I have not edited a podcast for a very long time. Can you have a listen, please? Mm -hmm. And I, I I've looked at it. I'm like, this is a very long episode. <laughs> 10 terabytes I, I, <laughs> I haven't had the time to sit down and be oh. able to listen to it yet and we had to stop <laughs> there's a part that we did not get we got through six games well part two, think part two. yeah part two Absolutely. yeah but part two is still eight games i think there's 14 mainline ones and then all of the extra ones so i was like oh, yeah go three episode you know what? That'll be, um, that'll i mean be cool. part of it is like it's the first yeah. time we uh, so the premise uh, is we go through franchises, mm -hmm. but by going through every game in a franchise mm -hmm. and if and talking about our experiences and our thoughts about it, and even just going through the plot, like it's just it's going to be it's long really regardless, right? Yeah, yeah I, I've um, I've sub subscribed to the Retronauts mm. uh, Patreon. Mm. Um, mm. I just I just go in and out of like liking different podcasts and now and then. It's like okay, yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try and get through the back catalogue of um, retro notes, so I'll subscribe to them for a few months. It's like, yeah, I like that kind of format. You know, yeah. just talking about old games because you know, even the context of like some of these games are old, but yeah, you know, I like looking back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's nice to experience mm -hmm. that from someone else's perspective as well, mm -hmm. without thinking, oh, I must, you know, I want to experience Assassin's Creed. Again, I'm yeah. going to go back and play mm -hmm. every single game in order, Absolutely kind of not. through. Or I could just listen to these three people talk about their experiences yeah. <laughs> with yeah. those games and relive yeah. those memories within an hour or two on a podcast. Perfect. Uh, so yes, yes uh, uh, Remember the Titans will be coming. Um, I I really I, wanted I, to be remember remember the titles. Remember the titles. Yes, yes. But... Um, I, I did what suggest my today suggestion? monthly. Yeah, my, mine was Remember the gonna, Titles, was. wasn't it? That was my It was, yes, it was. I like it, yeah. Yeah, um, I, I should... Push them on it. We haven't, we, haven't, we haven't published the feed. It can, it can be... That's true, uh, it's not up yet. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, good. Mm. Well, a lovely place for us to finish. Remember, go to outlives.net and you can experience all of these things as well and see our beautiful faces and the beers that we have drank. Thank you very much for joining us this week. We've been tanked up and we will see you soon. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. www.outoflives.net